Well, folks, we are at that point in the entry makeover. By the way, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Julie and I am the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com where I talk about all of the ways that we can personalize our home, build or grade or otherwise, and make it into our own wonderlands. Vintage living, modern homes. I have the last piece here and we are going to start and finish this little baby makeover and upcycling, if you will, of this beautiful vintage wardrobe. This is an English style, and unfortunately, when this was purchased at some point during its lifetime, the other half of this wardrobe was, I don't know if it was damaged and then thrown away, or if it was just not included in the sale because they were using it somewhere else. But this is actually only half of the wardrobe. It is supposed to be sitting on top of a very large drawer that has feet underneath. And because it's half of it, it's really short in comparison to what it's supposed to be. So it's kind of awkward. It's also not 100% my style and it could use a refinishing. Never fear, I am not painting it or at least not painting it in the traditional sense like you would expect. I'm going to be refinishing it, however. So let us get straight into the process. I'm really looking forward to stripping off the old varnish and and getting a look at the beautiful veneer underneath it, which you can still see right here. It has burl veneer on top of it and it's gonna look absolutely gorgeous. So I'm excited to get into it and I have an idea about what I'm going to do to it and I have some inspiration photos, which I will place on the screen for you so that you kind of get an idea of where I'm hoping to take it. I don't know if I'll make it there, however. So we'll just let the process flow and see what we come up with. To start, we're going to strip. Forget my mess over here, pardon me. This is all work in progress over here. I am working right here, however, and I have my citrus strip and I have my brush. And what I wanna do actually is just start, just start, cause that's how everything happens. So I'm gonna, gonna shake this as much as I can and then I'm just gonna start applying it. Let's have some fun with it. And thankfully this wardrobe is actually pretty light so I can move it around without straining my back too much in this part of the process. When it comes to building a base for it, I'm gonna need some help. So I'm just starting what I can with it because I wanna get it done. And I wanna show you guys the finished entryway because it's looking spectacular. All right, lit off, let's do what we do. I'm making quite the mess. Now I'm going to go and clean my brush and let this sit for probably 20 minutes and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna scrape all this crap off and it'll be very satisfying. Now I'm gonna go get my little bucket of water and my scrubby brush and I'm gonna see how much comes off and then decide if I'm going to do a second coat of citrus strip. I'm at the point where I realized I'm going to have to sand it anyway, so I'm not gonna do a second coat of citrus strip. I'm just gonna do the best that I can, scrubbing off what's here and scraping what little is left that I can get off, and then what I can't get off will be taken off with sandpaper in the entire process of taking it outside and building a base for it. It's my plan so far, it's working all right. I'm still amazed at how much comes off with just soap and water. All right, I'm finishing up day one of work. I got everything scraped. Obviously the door will still need to be done, but I'm gonna take it off for that and that will be maybe tomorrow's project. We'll see. I might be building the base tomorrow. Maybe I can do both, who knows? But it was hours of scraping, hours. It is now 6.35 at night and let's see. When did I start? I started at probably 3 p.m. So, it's been more than three hours of work so far and I am exhausted. So I'm happy to be done for the day and I'm excited to work on it tomorrow.
I'm assuming what were at some point some kind of stability system for when it had its like was in its base either that or somebody made made these feet <laughs> I, not quite what I would call them but they're gonna be in my way so because I'm gonna put the feet on the outside so I guess I need to take these off of course everything has to be flat headed screws you know all right got those makeshift feet off now it comes down to i measured it out for exactly where these need to go and i am creating obviously an entire base that will connect with pocket jig screw holes i have my measurements and i'm going to do it about a quarter of an inch shorter than this itself hopefully that's enough but we can adjust it i will do a dry fitting before I put it all together. So I have some two by fours I'm actually gonna use for this. And I'm gonna try to take the rounding off of them so that they look more refined, I guess, <laughs> prettier. So I'm gonna go and cut those boards right now. I had some two by fours that I cut down with my table saw and then I sanded them really smooth. And then I used my Craig jig to make the holes. So this is just one of the sides. And then it just sits like this. I need to cut more braces for the bottom of this, but I can't do it because it's nighttime, obviously. So I wanna actually cut braces. Let's get it put up on its feet and see how sturdy it feels, if it needs the extra bracing because it's actually not that heavy of a wet wardrobe. So it may not actually need the extra bracing. It's looking pretty good. Um, I may not need the extra bracing, so that would be awesome. And then tomorrow I can work on staining, staining the rest of the door area and then completely doing the door. And I have plans for the door as well, so. Oh my goodness, okay, that was a lot. Now I'm gonna freshly wipe it all down with a very mildly damp rag. And then I'm gonna let it sit, and then I'm going to stain it. And that will be very exciting, because I am really curious to see how gorgeous, I mean, I know it's gonna turn out gorgeous, so. All right, let me get a, a wet rag. All right, time to work on the door while this dries. I spared you <laughs> me taking off the rest of the hardware. I have special plans for the door, not only to build a top for it, but also to do a design on it. Since I'm building an additional top to make it look fancier, I figured that I would also go ahead and do some paint work on the door. I have some ideas but I'm not 100% on any of them. Before I can build the top, however, I want the top to go up like that. I kind of wish that this was even with the door, but I don't really want to cut it off. I don't know. Do I want to cut it off? No, I don't. I don't want to deal with the chance of breaking the mirror. So I'm just going to carefully take it outside and sand it down what I can of it. That must be my plan for now. And guess what? I'm gonna spare you the whole sanding thing too.
So there it is, completely stained. We can get a little bit closer look of it. It is beautiful. It took the stain pretty beautifully. I'm very happy with it overall. However, I am thinking that I should have made the base larger than the wardrobe. It's the tiniest bit wobbly, but I'm not going backwards. You live and you learn. It works perfectly fine and it's actually really light wardrobe. So that might be why. I may need to just add in those extra support pieces just for the weight. But um, we're gonna work on the door. I got it completely sanded. So it's got pretty like lighter color wood. I'm not really sure what kind of wood this is. Walnut maybe? I'm thinking that it's walnut. And this is veneer up here. So I don't know why they did that. I guess to match the rest of the wardrobe. But I'm thinking that I'm going to paint this inner part right here and then do a design on the bottom panel of the door. But I'm gonna have to clean this up and I wanna go and look for some design ideas, basically. The thing I love about these types of projects is that I get an opportunity to test some new skills or to work on and practice some new skills. And it's not such a big deal if it doesn't turn out perfectly. I'm sure that it's going to be beautiful. Even if it doesn't end up looking like something that fits in my house, I'm probably gonna sell it because it doesn't function well for us. It's too small. So it gives me an opportunity to make it into something that I think makes it better and do a little bit of design work, which is really fun for me. So I'm gonna go and find my inspiration probably make a stencil for that area so that at least I have some type of something to go off of. I don't like freehanding. That scares me. So <laughs> too much of a chance for screwing up and I don't want to have to re-sand it again. So all right, I'll be back. Okay, let me show you what I've been up to. I cut a piece of wood the same size as the top here. Obviously, it's not going to be the same kind of wood. That's just that's part of the reason why I'm going to be painting the door. But I went online and I found a fancy top to a wardrobe and I'm going to attempt to cut it out with my jigsaw. So what I actually did was I measured half of what the board is and I got myself some cardstock. I printed out the picture as close to that size as I could using Canva and I got basically this. I had to adjust it a bit and then I cut this out. So then I just traced it out onto here and that is what it looks like so far. Just like that. So in theory, it'll look like that on the top here. That's, that's the theory that I'm working with. <laughs> it is not so simple to cut out shapes like that with a jigsaw. So I'm gonna have to go really slow and um, really take my time with it basically. The next thing I have is I have found the designs that I want to paint on this. This is going to be the perimeter. Pretty much all the way down. And then this is going to be for the panel below. So just like that. And I have a few other designs that I want to kind of sprinkle in like maybe something up here to kind of make it flow better. I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. This is just my plan. So I actually need new blades for my jigsaw. So I hope that I can get a really good one that's for not as rough of sawing. That's my plan for the moment. All right, guys, let's try to make this wardrobe match our style. Well, my style, maybe it's not your style. Maybe you don't like folk art at all, but I actually really love folk art. So I'm really excited that I'm getting to try it out on a piece because I've wanted to for years. But while we are over here, let us test some of the color options we have. Let's see, this one is a chalk paint and it won't really matter between the types of paint, acrylic, um, wall paint, chalk paint won't matter because I'm going to be coating it. This needs a little bit more. That one's called moss. This one's called heirloom rose. Oh, that's gonna look gorgeous on here. This one is called mineral. These are like basically my brand colors, guys. It's kind of funny. And this one is called skyline. It's like a really pretty French blue, in my opinion, very pretty. And this one is called Greenscape. 
Oh, that's pretty too. So those are my color options. I also have another pink that I did my daughter's room, which is retro pink, and this is a much lighter one. Also a pretty color. That's pretty much my palette here. So let's zoom in a little bit so you can see those better. And this will be attached using a Craig jig. So, and I may have to do some wood filler and then sand it down a little bit. First things first, I gotta get a jigsaw blade and then we gotta see if we can even cut out this fancy design here without butchering it. So I have basically decided that before I'm gonna stain this part, I am going to paint this. Simply because if I get paint on the outside, then I can just sand over, sand it off and it'll be fine. But if I stain this, then I'll have to wait another 24 hours before I can use painter's tape. So that's not worth it to me. So I'm just gonna use some of the dark gray paint that I turned into chalk paint. <laughs> if I can get it open. So I used my Craig jig and I made the holes to attach this to the top and I have my screws. So this is three quarter inch wood. So I adjusted my Craig jig to three quarter inches and then I have to use one and a quarter inch screws. I'm also going to be using obviously some wood glue to keep it on there. I'm assuming I'm going to have to also use some wood putty to fill in the space and then possibly, well not possibly, I will have to stain it, uh, sand it again. The real trick here is going to be how I can hold it in place and screw it. Now I just need to do some finish sanding basically and it's looking pretty good. That is how you add a top piece to a wardrobe. I have sanded it flush and then I'm using wood putty, actual wood putty. We'll see how I like it. I don't know. I've not usually been a fan of it, but it's on a case to case basis. So we'll just try it out and see. I'm going to let it dry and then sand it down again, clean the entire thing. And then we can get to the fun part of staining what I'm going to stain and painting. I decided while I am waiting, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the base. It did not turn out stained anywhere near the rest of it, so I'm not gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna paint it. I did a second coat just in the front and I'm thinking the rest of it will probably need a second coat. <sighs> After that, I'm gonna go move on to coating the entire thing in polycrylic because I can. It is completely sanded clean and it is ready. I need to get some painter's tape and just tape this edge off because I'm only gonna be painting the top. Well, my camera got unplugged, so. I wonder how much you got. I don't know. There it is, completely painted, and I think it looks really good. I don't think that you can tell, really, unless you look really closely, that it is an extension on there. So that's pretty cool. I'm excited. Now I can either, <laughs> my choice is either polycrylic this, which I can do, or stain this, which I can also do. <laughs> I think I'm gonna wait to stain until this is completely dry so that I can put tape on top of it um, so I don't get stain on the paint because that will discolor the paint slightly. It's my plan for the moment. And I'm super excited to be able to get down there and paint and to paint the on, on the door itself. Very excited. Ignore my filth. I'm going to attempt to stain the door now. So it's laying on my coffee table in my very dirty living room and I'm not going to clean it specifically for this video. I'll probably clean it after the video, which makes perfect sense, doesn't it? And I ruined my last gloves, so. <laughs> I'm gonna let the sun shine. It looks pretty close to the other wood, which makes me really happy. It's a good thing. 
I'll paint with colors and I'll sing until my lungs give out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the sun shine in today. And I will leave my windows open so that I can hear the sound of people talking and the wind blowing in the trees. Oh, I will open up my eyes so I can see the light. Spread my wings so I can fly Oh, and the darkness starts to fade Feels like things are gonna go my way I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day I'm gonna let the past be filled with smoke And I will try to fix what has been broken Take this weight off my shoulders Cause I know yesterday ain't coming back mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the past stay in the cold I will listen to the ocean Let its unsaid words be spoken And I'll let my mind be carried by the waves It turned out pretty spectacular. That was hours of painting, just to let you know. I know I'm gonna speed it up for you guys, but that was quite a process. Bet you didn't think it was possible to turn an art deco wardrobe into a Swedish folk art wardrobe <laughs> with some French accents. <laughs> Um, I worried about it there for a while too. So now I have to coat everything 
The problem that I have been deliberating is that I have polycrylic or I have furniture wax. Typically, I would have gone with a furniture wax because that would have looked more traditional for a folk art style. It definitely would have had a more matte on it. However, polycrylic is better coverage, like better protective coat as far as concerned. And I am concerned about all of the painting like being preserved. So I think what I'm going to do is do a coat of polycrylic and then let that dry thoroughly and come back through with a furniture wax on top of it to give it that matte look. That's my plan right now. I had thought about just doing a furniture wax right away and then seeing how it holds up, but you cannot poly on top of furniture wax. I would have to completely remove the furniture wax using um, like mineral spirits, which I don't think that that acrylic paint would last being wiped down with mineral spirit. So technically it would completely ruin everything. So I have to just give it the better coating first and then try to put the mat on top of it, which I think it's going to work. So I'm not too nervous about that. It's just, I really wanted to finish it. I mean, this is Thursday guys, and you're gonna be watching this tomorrow. So. I'm like holding on by the grit of my teeth here, trying to finish this project and get it out to you because this thing was a beast. I have not ever record, I don't think I've recorded as much as I have with this one. So it's gonna be fun editing. I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> okay, let us get to the top coat. I'm really excited to finish this piece out. Might actually wanna record this, yeah. <laughs> Well, that was kind of crappy. I uh, learned the hard way that um, polycrylic, when you brush it too many times on over the other paint, starts to pull that paint into the polycrylic. So when applying polycrylic on top of painted wood, you have to be super careful and apply, like use as few brush strokes as possible and make sure to really wet your brush with the polycrylic when you're going over it. So it kind of just coats over the top of it instead of pulling on it. So that sucks. It was perfect and now it's just slightly less perfect. And of course that bothers me. <laughs> I'm gonna let the door dry and then we'll come in with the furniture wax and see if we can matte this shine. Goodness, my arms are killing me. My hands are cramping from all the things. Oh my goodness. You know, I used to have much more feminine hands before I started doing all this work. And um, yeah, I have very manly hands now because they're used to hard work now. No more of just piano playing. <laughs> Now, we're down to the nitty gritty, which means putting all of the hardware back on and also taking a razor blade to the mirror to take off all of the paint and other stuff that got onto it and I'm cleaning it really well. So I'm gonna do that first and then we're gonna get to put the hardware back on. I'm so excited, oh my gosh. <sighs> see, let's see if you can see how easy this is. It's really simple. So you just take a razor blade and you scrape it along the top of it. See, there's all the polycrylic that got on there. And this is why I never bother to tape off a mirror when I'm doing work on it, because it's so easy to get it off. It's not worth the tape or the hassle to me. It literally just takes a few minutes. And I know taping probably only takes a few minutes too, but painter's tape is not cheap, people. I just got the handle back on. Super pretty handle. And it opens in a really cool way, and I'll show you that later. But wanted to show you the ridiculousness of these flathead screws okay these are the ones from the hinges and I just want to show you that they are literally all different sizes see that and then even bigger ones and even bigger ones it's kind of ridiculous like 
they're all different sizes. So that's cool. Not. I don't think I have any more small Phillips, unfortunately. I wish that I did because I would totally switch these out because, you know, how I feel about flatheads. They really drive me nuts. So I'm just going to put the, the screws on this way first and then have somebody help me hold the door while I get the rest of it. So let's see. Make sure to put your hinges on correctly to where they close. Otherwise you will be in a lot of trouble. Let's see if I can do it by myself. It is complete. Look at that, complete. Now the really neat thing about this on its own without me doing anything to it is the handle. This handle is super cool. You actually twist it to unlock it. So very neat. It's a, one of those charms of older furniture that you will not find in newer furniture. So just one of very many. The process was, I mean, it seemed like it was going to be simple. They always do. But when it comes down to it, I added a lot to this wardrobe, not just the base. The base would have been simple all on its own, but I added the base and then I added the crown to the top. And then I added all of the hand painted goodness to the whole door. It is absolutely incredible. One of a kind. You will never find another one like this piece. So, oh my goodness. You can do this. You can take a piece of furniture that you don't love and turn it into something spectacular. It just takes a little bit of creativity, some time, some problem solving, and really very few supplies. There wasn't a whole lot that I needed. I mean, you watch the entire process. I won't go step by step for everything, but it really was just a lot of small projects. And I'm finding that that is the truth with pretty much everything in this house. It is a culmination of a lot of really small projects all rolled into one to make one giant impact. And Honestly, on its own, I feel like it would have been good enough, but the hand painting just took it to a whole other level and I am really happy with it. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's fantastic, absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be looking for more pieces of furniture to do this with because I actually have been obsessed with Swedish folk art painted on furniture for years and I have wanted the opportunity to try it out. I have done some kind of folksy pieces in the past. I've done one with wood burning and I really love that one. I still own that piece, but I really love painting on furniture. I just, I don't know, it's cathartic, which is kind of odd because I would prefer my furniture not painted. But right now in this season that I'm in, I am purchasing a lot of furniture that is veneered. And so I typically get it when the veneer is already shot. It's very rare that I get pieces where the veneer is in fantastic condition where I can just refinish a piece. In fact, I don't know that I've ever actually gotten one exactly like that. This one even had a few veneer problems, nothing to write home about, just a few um, missing pieces towards the bottom, probably because it's been sitting on its bottom, which it wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to be sitting on a base this entire time. So it's gotten beat up where it shouldn't have. It wasn't bad. So I didn't do anything to it. I just left it as is and it looks perfectly good. But that being said, when you have a lower budget, typically you are going to find pieces of furniture that need help. That's kind of how you do the whole furniture thing on a budget, <laughs> is you find the pieces that nobody else wants, that people are scared away of, that they don't have the vision for, and you use your vision to create something fantastic. And believe me, it's been like a decade in the making, so it does take time and it does take a lot of hard work and a lot of projects and even projects probably that you hated when you finished them. I've had a couple of those where I was like, I don't even know what I was thinking, but it's not the end of the world and people were happy to buy those pieces off of me because they loved them. They just weren't for me. So it is what it is and I had a lot of fun and that's the whole point of this entire process is to just enjoy the process and to learn as you go and don't beat yourself up if you make a mistake. Usually 99.9% .9 of the time they can't be fixed so don't stress out. Okay guys thank you so much for watching all the way through if you've made it this far and guess what? I am finished with my entryway guys. So you will be getting the full reveal next week's video. So be on the lookout for that. And I also have some really cool art tutorials coming out. <sighs> Again, 
a lot of really fun content on its way and I cannot wait to share it with you. And don't forget to check out my blog, capturingwonderland.com. I am always doing um, really great content on there as well. And it doesn't always coincide with my YouTube channel. So different content on there as there is here. So it all rounds itself out nicely. Thanks again, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, Come here. You can't find the pants. Come here. This is my body. Arms up. It's my body. What do you mean it's your body? You can't take, shave my body off. I can't shave your body off? Yes. It's really a pain death. Really expensive? Yes. It could be a Hey, Alan. Hey, yo. Hey, could you say peekaboo? Peekaboo. Hey. Oh, let's see about your shoes. <laughs> you want your unicorn ones? Yes, those are perfect for me. Perfect, perfect.